This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and start the chapter on entity valuation. So again, coming back to effectively, you know, not looking at the overall entity value of the equity plus the debt, but more of a focus really uh, in terms of valuing equity uh, and the practical issues that we have. So. Now think about what we've done in the last chapter. Now in the last chapter, we went through and used the dividend valuation model, didn't we? Okay, uh, and effectively that was looking at valuing a listed entity, wasn't it? Because your listed entities are likely to go through and pay some form of regular dividend, whether that's at the interim, final year. Again, we just made sure that it was a final dividend every single year, wasn't it? But if you begin to look at some smaller, unquoted businesses. Uh, you know, it's going to be difficult to value them because they might not have a regular pattern of dividends, might they? Uh, an unquoted business could be owner managed, so therefore the owner just takes out money as a dividend as and when they need it. Okay, uh, so here we start to look at how we value unquoted companies. Similarly, as well, when we go back and think about the dividend valuation model. What we also see as well was that if you're valuing a business based upon dividends, it tends to be used to value a minority shareholding. Okay, because if you are a minority shareholder, then you are effectively entitled to the dividends. You have no power or control over how the business is run if you just own a, a few shares in, say, BP. Okay, I'll get a dividend, I get some capital growth, but. You know, and I can attend the annual general meeting, but there's no way I can control that that business, is it? I don't own enough shares. Uh, so also as well, uh, this session will will look at what we can do if we're valuing large shareholdings in a quoted company, okay? Uh, because the small number dealt with the dividend valuation model. If you have large numbers, so effectively, if you have control. You know, you are buying all of the shares or enough to gain control and to dictate how that business is run, both operationally and financially, then it's your choice, isn't it, about how much that share is worth. OK, it's your opinion. And therefore, as you're buying a large amount of them, your opinion matters, doesn't it? OK, don't worry. I don't think that's going to be forming part of any questions, but I just thought I'd like to introduce the reasons why we have to start considering these other aspects on top of the dividend valuation model okay so given that we've looked at the dividend valuation model okay uh, what are the limitations okay uh, well the limitations are is that you know it gives you a value of a business okay or you know the value of your equity depending upon how we've gone through and looked at it okay but let's focus on the equity valuation we value the equity by taking the dividend, discounting them back at the required rate of return of the equity holder. And that price is what we believe is right. Okay. In a theoretical world, it is correct. But the issues that we have is that that share is traded on an active market and that market is not perfectly efficient. Okay. Uh, you know, markets don't like uncertainty, do they? At the moment, we're in that situation in the UK regarding Brexit. There's a lot of uncertainty, uh, and therefore that uncertainty gets factored into the share price. Okay, uh, if the market isn't confident about the outcome of Brexit, then therefore that might be reducing the value of the shares. If the market is confident about the outcome of Brexit for a particular market, you know, it's going to have different impacts on different particular business areas isn't it some might be successful so it might not be so successful uh, and therefore that's going to impact the price isn't it i think it talks about the uh, takeover bid you know if a takeover bid is announced then you know that means that the market isn't going to be perfectly efficient because it will process that information maybe into the share price shareholders will react either favorably or negatively uh, but you know that doesn't go through there and impact the dividends does it okay it's not going to impact therefore the dividend valuation model likewise as well market values do not change instantly okay it takes a while to go through there and react to the new information as it's published again in the days after the brexit was announced okay the share prices fell uh, there was a little bit of uh sentiment that people wanted to sell the shares because they didn't think businesses were going to do all that well following brexit there wasn't really a plan 
about how the UK was going to leave the European Union. OK, uh, but it, it changed further and further over the days. OK, as people started to take in more information, digest the potential pitfalls, the potential positive outcomes of how Brexit may then materialise. So therefore, it does take time and therefore that will be impacted by the volume of business that you have. Uh, the more volume that you have in terms of trades, therefore, the share price will react that bit quicker. The, the, the fewer trades that there are, the less that share price is likely to change. Again, we've worked out our value based upon a dividend that we, we believe to be set in the future. Uh, again, if that information is changed about the dividend, it won't impact the share price immediately. Okay, It will, it will impact things over time. OK, uh, the other issue that you've got as well is when we went through and looked at dividends, we first of all used the dividend valuation model with a constant annual dividend. We then went through there and looked at what may happen if a dividend was to go through there and grow at a constant annual rate. Where do we get the growth rate from? Where's the uncertainty in there? We're not sure that it's going to grow at a particular rate. We also said whatever that growth rate was, that it was a constant growth rate. Again, where does that constant growth rate all of a sudden become constant? It could grow at different rates over different periods of time, depending upon how successful or unsuccessful that business is into the future. So although theoretically the dividend valuation model is sound, from a practical perspective, it doesn't quite work as well as what we need it to do. And therefore, that's what this chapter is about. We're going to go through there and look at additional aspects to value either an unquoted company or large holdings within a quoted company and what we're going to go through and look at is the net assets basis of business valuation one of the issues that we see with the net assets basis is that it ignores your intangible assets because they may not be recognized within your financial statements because of pesky accounting rules okay uh, surely we should include the value of intangibles within the value of your business and then what we'll do is we'll take it away from say the balance sheet focus which is what we have with the net assets and then move it towards the income statement or the statement of profit or loss and start to look at an earnings based method of valuation okay so the notes are effectively split into three aspects uh, net assets intangibles and earnings but think of your intangibles and net assets as closely linked together okay and we'll talk about all of them in the following videos see you in a while